Let's compare a few versions of Return of the Jedi. The original theatrical cut, aka 4K83, Harmy's Despecialized Edition, the 2011 Blu-ray, and the 2019 Disney Plus version. Some of you guys might be wondering, maybe you're new to the channel, what is 4K83? Well, if you know what 4K77 is, then you can kind of guess what 4K83 is. When we say unaltered original Star Wars trilogy, 4K83 is as unaltered as unaltered can get. Both 4K77 and 4K83 are literally original film reels of A New Hope and Return of the Jedi as they originally were in the theater in 1977 and 1983. We can literally take a gander at how these movies looked to audiences on the day they were released. It's kind of cool. Let's take a look at the changes. Let's take a look at the color correction. Let's take a look at how these different versions compare. Let's go! But first... Thank you to Disney Emoji Blitz for sponsoring today's video. If you want to have some fun and support this YouTube channel while doing it, click the link in the video description below on your mobile device or tablet to download the game. That link acts as a creator code. I'm also hosting my own personal sweepstakes where I'll be giving away this Django Fett Black Series figure to a random person, so stay tuned to the end of this sponsored segment to find out how to win. Disney Emoji Blitz is unlike any other Match 3 game on the market. Each emoji has its own unique power-up and you control what to use, offering a strong layer of strategy to each game you play. My favorite emoji is Mando! Disney Pixar Star Wars emojis. There are new characters added every week and month. There are a ton of different emojis with different categories. Heroes, villains, silver, gold, rainbow, exclusive, collections, collections, collections. One of my favorite little features is that as you earn emojis in the game, you can send those emojis to your friends, your family. There are Star Wars events in the game periodically throughout the year and the next one is a Mandalorian event coming to the game very very soon in honor of the release of the Book of Boba Fett series on Disney Plus. Past Star Wars events included emojis such as the child, Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia, R2, C3PO, Anakin, Rey, Kylo, and much much more. And many of these past Star Wars emojis can still be earned throughout the month of November as well as some new ones. So get started. And exclusively for this video, Jam City is having a sweepstakes for all 26 Star Wars emojis in the game for two lucky viewers of mine, which is a ridiculous value. There is a link to fill out in the video description below. Fill that out. Good luck to you. Even if you win and if you already have some of the emojis, duplicate emojis are used to level up your emojis to make them power up even stronger. So keep collecting as much as you can. Again, click the link below to download the game. Like I said, the link acts as a creator code. Use the link, support the channel, and also whatever you spend in the game will also support the Hello Greedo YouTube channel. Win-win. Fun, fun. So now to that sweepstakes. You want to win this Django Fett Gaming Greats Black Series figure? All you have to do is download the game using my link in the description below, get to level 10 in the game, and take a screenshot or picture of yourself getting to level 10 and tag me on Instagram or Twitter. It's that simple. I will be picking a winner sometime in December. So keep tuning into these videos and Twitter to stay updated. All right. Back to the show. As I've said numerous times, but this bears repeating, the problem that I have is not that these various versions exist, it's that an official high definition version of the original unaltered version does not exist. Literally, 4K83 and Harmy's Despecialized Editions are fan made restorations. They're fan made projects. And those projects aimed to give us the original version of Star Wars that many of us grew up with. And I am so thankful that there are folks out there with the passion and talent to make this happen. I, I cannot express how thankful I am, but it is a bummer that an official release does not exist. It would be like a moral victory, right? Why can't we have all these various versions, right? At, th at the same time, you have the original version maybe in the same box set as the 2011 Blu-ray, right? I mean, hell, my Blade Runner Blu-ray box set has like five different versions. Why can't Star Wars be like that? There were a lot of changes made to Return of the Jedi. It all started with the 1997 Special Edition it continued with the 2004 DVD release, and in 2011, with the Blu-rays, changes were made once again. So, let's dive into some, because there are a lot, 
effect of these changes and compare. In 1997, the original Max Rebo band song called Lap De Neck was replaced with a new song called Jedi Rocks. The lead singer Cy Snoodles is now all CG. The band is mostly CG now as well. It just sticks out like a sore thumb. The dancer, Ula, now has three backup dancers, and some more footage was added to the scene as well, because the new Jedi Rock song is significantly longer than the original Lapty Neck song. If you've never heard the original song Lapty Neck, check it out. I, I think it's more subtle. To me, it, it better fits the moment. But hey, a new shot of Ula was added showing her standing up in the Rancor's pit and screaming. This shot was originally not there. A new shot of Boba Fett doing a little flirting at Jabba's palace was added. This shot was not originally there. Originally, the Sarlacc pit was just a pit, a living hole in the sand, a big old mouth that gobbled people up. Walk the plank. It's kind of neat. But in 1997, the Sarlacc pit was changed and a beak like a Venus flytrap kind of thing was added, along with more tentacles. When Han is about to fire a blaster at a tentacle that is holding on to Lando, he originally said, it's all right, trust me. But for the 1997 special edition, he now says, it's all right, I can see a lot better. A shockwave ring was added to the Death Star explosion in 1997. New celebration scenes were added in 1997 at the end of the movie. Parties on Endor, Bespin, Tatooine, and Coruscant are now shown. And in 2004, for the DVD release, a celebration on Naboo was added. The song that originally played at the end of the movie known as Yub Nub was replaced by a new song called Victory Celebration. A short shot of Luke hugging Wedge was added in 1997. The Force Ghost sequence of shots have been edited around a bit. When you see how the original 4K83 version was, you see that the sequence of shots went from a medium shot of the ghosts to a shot of Luke and his friends, and then another long shot of the ghosts. That sequence was changed in the 1997 special editions. Oh, and in 2004, for the DVD release, Hayden Christensen replaced Sebastian Shaw. But only the head was replaced. The rest of Anakin's body is Sebastian Shaw's original body, but it was digitally altered to look a little more like Hayden's body. This is obvious when you compare the motion of each forced ghost bodies. It's identical. So most of those were 1997 special edition changes with a few 2004 DVD changes sprinkled in. There were even more changes made to the 2004 DVD. Let's take a little look at some of those. All right, follow along with me here. The speed of Luke's speeder bike was decreased when Luke slows down to attack the two Imperial Scouts. According to Wikipedia, this change was made to add realism upon braking speed and to also match Commander Neo's speeder bike attack upon Jedi Master Stas Ali on Seleucami in Revenge of the Sith. Hey, do you remember Commando Neo's speeder bike? And remember Jedi Master Stas Ali? And remember Seleucami? Me neither. In 2004, when Vader was unmasked, revealing Anakin Skywalker's face for the first time to the world, Sebastian Shaw's eyebrows were digitally removed. Not only that, the color of his eyes were changed to blue, and his skin tone was changed to be more pale and gray. Now those were a few of the 2004 changes. Now let's take a look at some of the changes made to the 2011 Return of the Jedi Blu-ray. The door on Jabba's palace was made bigger. As Han is being released from Carbonite, the flashes were made to be brighter. A CGI Doug creature was added in Jabba's palace, it just kind of walks by. The Ewoks now blink. As of 2011, the Ewoks have digital eyelids. And in 2011, Vader now yells, no, when he goes to throw the Emperor off the ledge. I hate this, I, I really do hate this change so much. It's one of my least favorite changes, hands down. Vader's silent redemption was beautiful, man. I could go on and on about this scene, about this change, but hey. Sometimes less is more, right? With all of these changes, I think that's one of the biggest lessons. Sometimes less is more.
Now with the Disney Plus 4K version of Return of the Jedi, I don't think that any overt changes were made. There are no new McClunky moments in Return of the Jedi. I, I, now I don't know if there would have been more changes, but let me, let me kind of explain this. Um, the story is that in 2010, George Lucas began tinkering with the movies again for a 3D release of the trilogy, of the saga. But then the franchise was bought by Disney in 2012. He was kind of tinkering with A New Hope and The Empire Strikes Back. But that project was ultimately scrapped. Despite that, some of the changes that had already been made to A New Hope and The Empire Strikes Back were implemented and added to the movies that Disney purchased. Like there are new changes to A New Hope and The Empire Strikes Back that Lucas made before Disney acquired the franchise. It's interesting. I, I don't know, it's interesting. And, and if he would have continued altering the movies for the 3D release, would he have gotten to Return of the Jedi? Who knows? But the Disney Plus 4K version, whatever you want to call it, that restoration came about with all new scans of the films. So the biggest difference between versions is the color, the tone, the tint. A lot of the previous releases had some bad color correction and bad digital video noise reduction, that kind of stuff. Anyway, it's always interesting to take a look at this stuff. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe. That's what YouTubers say, right? Don't forget to like and subscribe, I guess. All right, see ya.